Carbo Hall with us online right now? Yes, this is me. Little Hands of Stone. Doing? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Hey, thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. I got to tell you, dude, uh, one of my idols, somebody that I've, I've watched, looked up to, and said, man, that, that dude is just putting everything on the map. You put Arizona, you put the, the little guys on the map, and you put Mexican-Americans on that map for boxing. Um, let me ask you, how are you doing? I'm doing really good. I'm just, um, just working here at the gym. I'm um, taking care of the, the fighters here. You know, you know, Michael, I, I want to touch on from the beginning in your career. Um, when you got into the to the Olympics, you know, you were boxing out of the Ninth Street Gym, which was made by your by your older brother Danny Carbajal in in the back of his house. Um, give me give give us a little bit of insight about that. Do you think that that right now, because now you see facilities where they got strength and conditioning coaches. They got all this other stuff that they're bringing in that are super high tech. Do you think that what you had was just enough? Or do you think that what people are doing nowadays could have furthered your career? No, I I think that um, what I had was enough. I mean, it, I, it, it's just going back to the old school. I mean, I, I didn't have no conditioning coach. I didn't have no strength straight training coach or anything like that. I just went straight ahead and trained hard and fought hard, and, and that's what I did. And um, I think that was just enough. So when you see that, Mike, let me ask you, when you see stuff like that, what is your train of thought? I mean, what what do you think about about all the new added stuff in, in boxing today? I You know what? I think some of it, some of it is really good that – some of the things that I look at are, are good, but I think when you when you go back like to the old school, like I did, I just did the regular training, like 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 the fighters always used to do, and um, I I just thought that was just enough to uh, again you got to be really really dedicated and de- and and really determined to be champion, and 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 that's what I did. Do you keep current, Mike? Let me ask you this: Do you keep current what's going on today in boxing, or or are you more focused of what's happening in your gym? No, I I keep current. I keep current. I I pretty much watch the fights still, and um, and um, I still watch the fights. I'm still a I'm still a big fan of boxing, of course. You know, five time world champion, you're a Hall of Famer. What do you, in your opinion? What do you think right now is hurting the sport? The sport that 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 brought you to where you're at, the sport that you fought and you loved, uh, you know, the sport that actually you know made you get up and go into the gym. What do you think right now is lacking in the sport of boxing? It's just the fact that um, fighters are not fighting who they should be fighting, or who's ever at at the top of their weight class, and who's ever. The other champion, that's who you want. That's who you want to fight. It's just like um, when when I fought um, Chiquita. Chiquita always wanted to fight me. I always wanted to fight him. He was the WBC great fight. champion. Yeah. I was the IBS champion. So that's what we did, and um, that's what I see that's really lacking. Absolutely. I'm going to bring in my co-host, uh, Mr. Gabriel Montoya. Uh, Gabriel, you got any questions? I know you have questions. Oh, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, ton, tons of them. Um, welcome to the show. That really, truly, um, just an honor to be in your presence, even if it's just on the radio. Uh, you, you were like like Deco Dave. One of the reasons I love this sport. I, mean, I just love watching you fight, and I'm, I'm curious where, where your style and your mentality. You know, how you would describe it, and where did it come from? That's um, I don't know. I was more of a boxer, boxer puncher kind of. Um, with a lot of pressure, um, that just came from my father. Um, he just taught me since I was a, a, a little kid, and um, that's just the style that I that I grew up fighting in, and I'm throughout the, the my amateur days. So that's how that just came about. I mean, was part of it. It always seemed like if you got hit, you would you would come back and 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 try to assert dominance with you know throw flurry of punches. Uh, you were always just so aggressive. Is that that's part of that, the, that never letting the other guy score on you, uh, always being the, you know, the, the get the last shot in. 
uh, that's your that's just your father drilling that into you. What my father told me was is the conditioning fact. Once you're in condition, and once you get in condition, there's nobody that can beat you. And I want you to believe that because once you're in condition, there's no one that can beat you. And I always put that in my mind. So every time I step in the ring, and I looked across the corner, I said, "You're mine. You're mine." This is it. I'm whooping your ass, and that's it. And that's the way that that I always that I always looked at it. How much did you know? Because I, I, if I remember correctly, uh, Roberto Duran was one of your idols, and and your mom used to tease you about how she would say, you know, when you were little, saying, "Oh, I'm gonna go move with this guy," and he used to really upset you. How much of that really yeah. played in, uh, into the part of you becoming Little Hands of Stone? He, uh, after I started watching him fight, after my mom would tease me about that, after I started watching him fight, I just found love. I just found love with his style. And then um, after that, um, they just t- started calling me Little Hands of Stone. <laughs> that was, yeah. <laughs> that that was that was really funny. But she really did get me mad. But I was a, a young kid, but after... I started to grow in into it. Uh-huh. I have always like see since I was five years old, I've always told my father, I'm gonna be a champion and I'm a retired champion. That's one thing I always told him. I'm a retired champion. I'm not gonna stay in, in there too long like all these other champions that just stay there too long until they get knocked out or until they get beat up a a lot. I'm not gonna do that. Right. So and 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 that's and that was my whole goal right there, to be champion but, and retire champion. Right. But you did you did retire, you know, once. Right. You retired after the two losses with Gonzalez. But then right. you came back. Right. What, you know, what made you come back and what made you see? Because that Jorge Odyssey fight. I got. I mean, you know, listeners, especially for the for the young guys that are barely getting into boxing. Uh, um, if you haven't had a chance to watch Michael Carbajal, well, you're, you're missing out. Don't call yourself a boxing head. Go back and check out the fight. You got in with the lollipop kid, Jorge Arce, at a young age. The kid was a young, you know, young gun out of the, uh, Tijuana right. in Mexico. You get in there. He's very dangerous. He's outboxing you, but you stay yes. true to what you normally do, which is come forward like a bull, and then you land the big punch. But why did you take that fight, Michael? Why did you decide at, coming out to come out of retirement to come after that guy? Well, see, when I when I came out of retirement, I've always I, I've always said, you know what? I had told my brother, look, I'm gonna come back, because I always told my dad I was gonna retire champion, and I didn't. So when I came back, I had a couple of fights, and then top rank called, and um, they called me and they said that we got you a title fight against um, Jorge Arce. I didn't even know who Jorge Arce was, and at the time he was fighting for Top Rank. So I think Top Rank tried to use me because I was a big name to make Jorge um, Arce rise up. Right. So they thought Jorge Arce was going to beat me, and um, so I said, "Good, I got a title fight. Now I'm not going to let this go." So we took it, and um, he was beating me. Believe me, he was outboxing me. And um, I caught him, like, in the fifth round with the right hand, and I heard him. I knocked him down, and he came, he still came back. But I said, I know I'm going to get him. I'm going to catch him again. I know I'm going to catch him again because later on he, st- he started to get braver and braver. And I said, right. watch, I'm going to catch him. I'm going to catch him. And then the 11th round, I caught him again with that right hand, and that was it. And then... Um, after that, I had went to the dressing room and told Jorge, you know what, you don't worry about it, you're young, you're going to be champion again. And you know what, he became three, four-time champion. Yeah, he which did. Which I, yeah, I didn't came. even know you I'd expect that, and he became, he's great now. Yeah, he's, he's a great he's, fighter. How, when you, you lost to uh, Baby Jake uh, in 1997, right. and right. that was your first stoppage loss, and, uh, right. and you stopped. How hard was it? Like, how long of a road is it from from there to Jorge Arce? Like, did you just see, believe that, that it was, was going to happen? See that 
that was in 97 when that happened. See, right, I, I couldn't believe I, that, right? So I said, man, I can't lose to a guy like that. There's no way. But hmm. um, th- so I waited a whole year. And I said, no, nah, I got to come back. I, already, I Like I said, I told my dad I'm going I'm to be world champion. I'm a retired champion. I'm coming back. So it took me about a year for that come back. And um, that, that, that was it, man. I just came back and I said, I'm going to become champion. And then when I become champion, no more for me. And I did it. Was it easy to but walk away? You know away? what? It's what, all in the mind, fight? too. You've got to have a strong mentality. You've got to have a strong mind and believe and believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to do anything. That's why I tell the kids, look, once you believe in yourself, you get all the confidence in yourself, you can do anything. I mean, anything that you want. It don't matter what you're, do, what you're going to do or what you're going to be, be. What you do, I want you to be the best at. You go like this. I'm going to be the best at whatever I'm going to do, and you will, and you will, and you will accomplish that, guaranteed. How hard was it for you to walk away with that win and not try to push it a little bit, make a little extra Believe money in the me, defense? I, I miss it. Believe me. After that, oh man. After that, I missed it. I mean, I still miss it. But I knew, you know what? I'm not going to come back. I'm not. I'm not going to look. Like I said, that was my goal to retire champion, and that's all that mattered to me. Win that title, and that's it, Michael. You don't got to fight anymore. And that's what Michael, I did. Michael, let me ask you, uh, how 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 much of a big deal was it for you in your career and for other fighters uh, that were in the lower weight divisions when you broke the pay-per-view mark for being one of the first guys to be the highest paid athlete in that di- in, in, in the lower weight divisions? Okay, I mi- I missed the question. Now, what was that again? How much was it? What, how, how much was, was it? it? Yeah, how was it for you to be the guy that? Because at the time, you know, it was the heavyweights that were reigning. Those were the guys that everybody was paying to see on pay per view. But you broke that mark. You're the one that kind of broke that barrier. You were the first guy to really kind of get out there. How much did that mean to you? You know what? At the time, I wasn't really thinking about it. I was just fighting because I loved it. That's that's and that's what happened. Now when I look back at it, I'm like, whoa! I don't. I really don't imagine what I did. See, it makes me cry now. Think about it. I said, man, that is wild. At the time when I was fighting, I wasn't even worried about that. I was just fighting because right. I loved it and I wanted to be the best. And that's and I'm, and that's what happened. I mean, it just came about. I wasn't even thinking about that. When you when you see guys like right now, you said you know it it, it brings tears to your eyes because that that wasn't even on your mind. That was not your mindset. Uh, uh, was thinking about breaking barriers and 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 you know doing right. certain things that nobody had really done. Does it upset you, or do you ever go like, man, what's wrong with these other fighters nowadays that? They don't even have that mindset. All they care about is how much money they're going to have in their bank account. They don't care about giving the fight fans the best right. fights out there, and they don't care about being one of the greats. What is, what are you, what's your opinion about all of that? You know what? That, you know what's so funny about that? Like some of the kids will come to me, and, and um, they'll come up just say, they'll come up and say, I want to be famous and make a lot of money. I said, no, you're going to come in the gym to be champion. And and you're going to come to the gym. Look, if you don't come into the gym and you don't love to fight and you want to be famous and make a lot of money, you're not going to go nowhere. But if you love to fight and want to be champion, you'll go, and then all of that will come by itself. That's how yeah. I see it. Well, that's how yeah, you it did sense. it. <laughs> yeah, it, huh? it makes sense, and it, it, it translates. That's why you were so exciting. 
is because you seem to love your work. I mean, the the, the first I mean, fight with Chiquito Gonzalez, uh, just your perseverance and that mental toughness, but you seem to really enjoy when it was down and dirty and, and tough. Talk about those fights and just, uh, I mean, they, you know, you had all these other guys that you faced, but something about you and Gonzalez, what, what made you guys so special together? Our styles. Our styles, um, styles, because the first fight, I remember he had told me, don't run. And I said, what makes you think that I'm going to run from you? Because he said I was going to run. And I stood there, and, you know, we got down. He knocked me down in the second round, then he knocked me down in the fifth round. Fifth round, I was really hurt. I mean, I was terribly hurt. But once my legs got together, I said, ah, I got it. I got his ass now. So that's what happened then. So the second fight, when we went to Mexico City, I mean to Los Angeles, I said, no, you don't run from me. Right. And he didn't say nothing. He didn't <laughs> say nothing. And that's what he did. He boxed. No, but he, you know what? He didn't run. He just boxed, which which was very smart for him to do. Yeah. He, he knew if he would have stood there with me, the same thing would have happened. Just like we went. See, when I went to Mexico City, I thought he was just going to stay there and fight because he's in his home crowd, and the Mexicans over there they don't like when the guy moves around. Right. Still did it, and that's why they started throwing pillows and everything after the fight. And they gave him all kinds of, um, you know, they were just criticizing him for for running and 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 doing all that. But see, I I loved it, and, and Chiquita knew it. But you know what? If he would if he would have stood there, the two the next two times or whatever, we would have had the same kind of fight as the first one. Believe me, we would have. I know we would have. But um, let me see. All the other fights that I had, uh, Robinson Cuesta. Um, uh, see, I fought, I fought all the number one contenders. If you think about it, ever yeah, since I won the Nene. title, I fought the number one contender, number one contender, number one. Because you know, I told my brother, you you give me all the number one contenders, all of them. I don't want to be fighting no number tens and everything. Not that I didn't, but every time. Give me the number one. Give me the number one. Give me the number. One. I will in like three times in a row fighting number one contenders. You know what, Michael? I always wanted to ask you this, man. Um, did did other fighters kind of resent you when you did some pro? Like you would do pro, uh, post interviews before your fights or even after your fights, and you would always call your other opponent a good little fighter. And, and and I don't know. I I always thought that other fighters kind of looked at you like like you were just dissing them. Did you ever? Did they ever come at you later and tell you like, hey, why did you call me a good little fighter? And why did you say that? I said he was a good fighter. I don't remember if I said good little <laughs> fighter, but if I did, I did. <laughs> I said he was a good fighter. You know, I've always I was always um, gracious. I mean, um, good sport. I never, like, downed anybody that I remember unless they did it to me. I don't think you were no, doing it. I don't think you were, you were, you were, you were doing, uh, uh, you know, downing anybody and stuff like that. I just thought, I, you know what, honestly, I thought that you had such a warrior mentality that you thought nothing, nothing can destroy you. I mean, because I remember when you fought Gonzalez, that first time you got dropped, you got up, and you were, like, pounding your gloves – and you were like, okay, okay, you got me. You got me. I remember that thing in your face. You were like, okay, you got me. Okay, cool, whatever. And I could hear your brother yelling at you, you know what I mean? And you kind of looked over. You were fine. Then this, And then you just went at it. I mean, there was something about you. that You had this aura that was more of a giant, if anything, when you stepped in. Thank you, I know a lot of fight fans. That, thank you for that compliment. But you know what? That's, that's what I had in my mentality. I was the warrior type. I was a, I, I wanted to stay there and fight. If you come and stay and fight with me, I'll I'll give all the fans a fight. I mean, stay there and fight with me, and there's going to be an exciting fight. That's what. See, that's what what's lacking today. Like um, 
Look at uh, Mayweather. He's making all this money and bragging about how, how much money he's making. And, and and look at all this stupid shit that he comes up with. He don't want right. to fight Patel. And then he's talking about gloves with Madonna. He's talking about uh, all this of all this complaining bullshit. Right. I hate I hate fighters like that that complain. <clears throat> I mean, Mayweather is a good boxer. Just shut your mouth and I'll box everybody. And but fight the people that 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 you should be fighting. You should have fought Pacquiao a long time ago. Yeah, this should be on number three by now. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, I mean, they they started in 2010, late 20, 2009. They started talking oh, about it. Man, That's when the fight was a natural. They should be on number three. It, 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 I think that stuff kind of makes our sport look bad. I mean, what do you think the, the rest of the world looks at our sport? Because in your time, it seemed that people still really cared universally about the sport. And nowadays it feels like less people care and it's more of a niche sport. Is that do you think that's correct? You know what? I I don't know. You know, boxing always goes through a, a, a time period that that's like this where where it slows down with, with the people, but it always comes back because of someone. Someone's gonna come back and bring it back again. If there's always someone that brings it back. There's always a fighter that brings it back. You know who my favorite fighter is right now? Hmm. Who's that? Who I think can fight and gets down is Mikey Garcia. Hmm. That's my favorite fighter right now. He hasn't fought wow. because I guess he's going through litigation or some right. kind, some kind of thing. But yeah. man, that guy now that guy can fight. He can box. He can punch. He can stay there and fight. It reminds me of me, to tell you the truth. Wow. That dude could fight. He's my favorite fighter. There you go. Wow. Michael. That's uh, that's high praise, man. Yeah, big time. Especially coming from the little hands of stone. Uh, my, I, I want to I talk to you, you know, I want to talk to you about some other stuff here. Um, go ahead, bro. And, and, ho- and hopefully, hopefully, you know, I'm not out of bounds of, of anything I'm asking you. No. Um, we talked about already know familiar... what's coming. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I already know. Go, go, go ahead. Ask me. Great, great. Um, the familiar voice that's been with you from the, you know, from the beginning, uh, the guy that was in the stadium up and up in the bleachers screaming out to you when you were mm-hmm. in the Olympics, which was your older brother, Danny Carverhall. The right. guy that was right beside you, uh, going through the trenches of you becoming a world champion. Mm-hmm. Become yeah. a convicted felon uh, who forged papers in order to take away of states that they were rightfully yours, forged your mother's name. Let me ask you, yeah. what what happened there, Michael? What what happened why was it? Why wasn't this something that was caught on earlier? Why do you think that? What do you think went wrong between the relationship that you had with your brother and who you thought you knew was your brother, and where Danny' mindset was at? My my relationship never changed, ever. I've always trusted the guy. It's him. He got greedy. The greed got to him. That's what happened. Now I don't, I don't I don't want nothing to do with them. I don't even I don't talk to him. It's he, really it's not what he did to me that really hurt. I mean it hurt. It's what he did to my mother. You know that he sued my mother. Right. He is he out of his goddamn mind. That's the that's the least you can go, man. Against your own mother. That's the least you can go. There's no. There's, I mean, to me, he's nothing. He's nothing. That's why everything's happening bad to him now. IRS has got his ass. They're seizing all his properties. I said, yes, good. It's about goddamn time. He went to prison for four years for the fraud against his ex-wife, which he is the number one suspect of the double, double homicide, which... I know. I know mm-hmm. damn well he's the one who did it. 
They just don't got no evidence, but they'll catch him with it. I guarantee Mike, you. Mike, let me ask you because you know when when you when you when you talk about that, I got. I mean, I mean, I'm just t- talking on a personal on a personal level. You know, my older brother, Mike, Mike. Um, yeah. Who I, you know, we, we. I mean, you obviously grew up with your older brother. I grew up with my older brother. Did, uh-huh. it, it, for something for that to happen, I, I, I would be, I, I'd be destroyed, man. I mean, how does this, how do you keep your spirit up, and how do you sit back and, because if this happened to me, I would be going like, what, what, what went wrong? What, what happened between us? What, I mean, money, yes, I have, it could have been greed, but to go to the next level of what your older brother did, Danny, there's got to be something else there. I mean, do you ever think about that? No, there's not. There's nothing. Look. There's nothing that went wrong between there's nothing that wrong went wrong with me. I guarantee you that. Everything right. was about him. He's the one. He's the one that he's the greedy greed, man. Greed, selfishness and 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 he thought he was the one that did everything. But I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm the one that trained in the back by myself. He was never in the backyard in that little tiny gym. I was in there every single morning at 5 in the morning after running and doing my workout and doing everything. The only, you know what? The only time that he was around is when the cameras were around. Oh, wow. That's when he came around. That's when he came around. And you know what? I never noticed that. I never noticed that, just like I never noticed about his stealing. So, you know so I mean? the whole, yeah. So the whole front with the story when they were building you guys up, you know, the two of you guys in the trials of your Olympics, when all of Phoenix, your whole family, you come from, a, 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 you know, brothers and sisters of nine, and he had all the nephews, nieces, and cousins there at your home. All that time there, even with him up in the stadium yelling out instructions to you, he was. It was are you telling me he was really, really not there? When I was training, no, he wasn't. I'm telling you, my dad is the one that taught me how to fight. <clears throat> wow. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the truth, man. It, uh-huh. it, everybody everybody thinks that. Everyone thinks that. So why, like, did, why didn't you ever out him out then, Mike, at that, uh, Michael, at that time? Did, was it because of loyalty to your I brother? Because I trusted you said, him. Right. Because right. he, he was my brother. Come on now. He was my brother. Yeah. I loved him. So what? what am I going to say anything for? What am I going to say anything bad about him for? I loved him. I should have knew. Right. But I was too young. I was too concentrated <clears throat> on being a champion. I was too focused on being a world champion. I was way too focused. you got to understand that. No, I can understand that. It's just, man, well, that's it's, just... It's, it's a hard thing because just, you... you it's know, just crazy, boxes, huh? But I'll tell you, you know so what, young. you know what, you know what, you know what kept me alive and mm. everything else that kept me this strong. What's that, Michael? Is love, brother. Without love, you ain't got nothing whatsoever. So I want everybody to remember that, because that's what my my parents gave me. They gave us all of that. I don't know what happened to him, though, because he don't have no love whatsoever. But that's what, have you, that, that's what kept me strong. Have you had Have you had a chance with your brother, Danny, uh, in, in when we talk about closure, have you ever had a chance to sit and, and talk to him across and ask him? I'm, I'm pretty let sure you have you. questions of your own. Yeah, go ahead. Look, let me tell you what happened. When I found out what happened, I went to his house. When I found out when it when he first started stealing from me, it was in mm-hmm. two thousand. He went. I, I had made the the Hall of Fame in two thousand six. That's when I started to find out what had happened. Right. But he was being investigated for the murder. They went to the Hall of Fame in two thousand seven, which I was supposed to go for an appearance. But I started finding out about what happened. So I went to his house when they came back 
And he goes, hey, Michael. I go, Danny, why don't you give me all my shit, man? He goes, what? It's because my girlfriend is the one that found out. Uh-huh. And he goes, you, you let, see, you have that little white bitch. Um, you believe in her? I said, look, I got paperwork. Wow. I got black and white. I, you just give me all my shit, God damn it. And he goes, you know what? Fuck you, Michael. And I go, you know what? You're lucky. So I, I, I walked out of his house. I slammed the door. And he goes, what are you going to do? Call the cops? What are you going to do? Call the cops? I go, fuck you. I'm not talking to you no more. You'll see what's going to happen. That's the last time I talked to him. And then I seen him at some fights, right? First right. I seen him at a restaurant. He walked into a restaurant with his girlfriend. I was with my girlfriend. I was already there. He walked in, he seen me, he walked right out. And then I seen him at the fights. I walked right past by him. He wouldn't even look at me in the face. He put his head down. I should have knocked his ass out right there, but I said, you know what? I'm not. I could have too. But I didn't. See, that's how bad, how bad I want to do him bad. But you know what? Everything's coming back to him. And that's right. what I love. That's what I love. He, let me ask you. He put you, obviously, he put you in, a, in financial dire. Uh, your retirement, he took that. He took property away. Where are you in now in terms of, are you back on your feet, Michael? Yeah. I mean, uh, did you get back 9th Street, Jim? I mean, yeah. I, I know that was something that was. I got back was... to Jim. I got, I got back my properties. I got back my whole neighborhood because we we went to court. They had to sign it over to me. He had to sign everything back over to me. It's because of my girlfriend. That's That's what happened. But I'm I'm um, oh yeah I'm on my feet now. Now he was released in 2011 in December, right? Right. And yeah. then, and then, his, I believe it's his grandson, right, Keenan, who's now yeah. using his using your la- your guys' last name, uh, a Carbajal, and this is just yeah. recently. He's got a domestic violence. What 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 is your feelings about that? that this is something still ongoing. And what has it done to you and your brothers and sisters and your whole family overall? Has it divided you guys or... or? Go ahead. Of course. Yeah, it's a, it, it has divided us. Everybody's with me, though. Everyone's mm-hmm. with me. That's it. Everybody's with me. All, all my brothers and sisters but one, that's it. That's it. Just one. It's with him. Do you ever foresee a, uh, <clears throat> some sort of reconciliation whatsoever? Oh hell no, never. It's just, never. It's just uh, something that's just. It's just too much. It, no, nothing. It will never happen. Never. Never in this lifetime. We're well, looking to the and future. Anyways, hey, since. You know, they, they, they hate me so bad. Why is that little chump Keenan who got knocked out his first fight, his first pro fight, he's wearing my trunks. Well, wearing trunks like mine. White trunks with Carbajal. Wow. Why does, it, why does he make his own identity? The boy can't fight like me. Why, why, why try to even be like me? Well, let's be fair. There's not a lot of people that are going to be able to fight like you, Michael. <laughs> No, I'm just saying, though. Why Why are they doing that? I mean, after everything that they did, I mean, they're still trying to use my name? Right. Has the that's, state of Arizona the, accepted that? Let me ask you this. Has the state of Arizona accepted that, and has the commissioner accepted the fact that I mean, right now, because of athletes, what's going on between athletes and football players, and even with Floyd Mayweather, when you mentioned him earlier, domestic violence yeah. is, is something that's really major. Here's yeah, a kid that's major, that has and I this. Hope they for it. So, have they accepted this? Are they? Are there anything being done about about? You know what? I don't know you know? what's going to be done about it, but I hope they get them. 
I don't know what's going to be done, but I hope they get them for it. I know, so I know they're investigating. So that's something you just I know don't they're condone, investigating, right? You don't condone you it. You never hit a woman, anyway. Right. You know how how strong a man is to a woman. I mean, even I don't care what the woman does to you. You don't ever put your hands on her, no matter what, at all. I don't Absolutely. care what she does. Absolutely. That's that's well, my, the kind of man I am. Well, fight fans, we have Michael Little Hands of Stones, uh, Carbohol Hall with us here on Leaving the Ring Radio. I want to thank you, Michael, again for just taking the time to come on the show and talking to okay. us. And All you right. know, this is G- going- Gabriel and is Gabriel David. and 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 what? And David. And David. And David. And David. Hey, oh, I'm sorry, David. No problem. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I don't know who I'm going with right now, David or Gabriel. Sorry. You're on uh, with both. Okay, but, but, but right thank now. you guys. Uh, thank you guys. Thank, thank you for having me on the show, man. And um, thank you thank guys for all the compliments. Hey, thank you, really man. Thank you for all the great fights. Thank you for all the great thank, fights, Michael. Thank you. I mean, all right. You know, appreciate it. You have a good night, man. All right, hey, all right man. You guys take care. You all right. Care. Love you guys. You remember, without love, you ain't got nothing. That's take it, care. brother. All right. You, you too. too. Hello? You know, um, man, real powerful stuff. Real, real powerful stuff from Michael Carbo Hall. Uh, Given the definition mm. of what a world, of a world champion is supposed to be and where the state of the game was at that time, um, <laughs> making the breakthrough, you know, being the little guy and just breaking the barriers of saying, hey, you know what, we're here. And at the same time, I mean, look, you know, here's the amazing thing is in good spirits see where he's at, still, he's got something that oh, not yeah. a lot of us, I don't think, as a human can shake off. You know, you had somebody that basically used you and, and, and took everything that you had underneath your nose because of trust. Well, yeah, I mean, it's still, you know, it's still there. It's still so fresh. I mean, it's nothing hurts like family, you know, and and you can hear it that it's still there. It's kind of nothing really can really say, you know, and it's like as much as love got him through, love's not going to take any of the things he feels about about him away, you know, and it's, uh, wow, it just, and you can still hear the, like when you ask him that and he says, you know, no. I'm not, you know, that's, you know, no, you, you, you get a little glimpse of that guy that just wouldn't give up, you know, uh, against Gonzalez the first time and or any of the times, you know, and the guy that was getting beaten by Jorge Arce in his prime or, you know, kind of as a, as a prospect burgeoning champion. And he goes out like that, taking him out. Um, it's, it's what makes a guy a fighter. And it's, it really, you know, he's just straight up. It, I, I don't think he really is romanticizing the past. It doesn't feel like it in terms of what he said about Floyd and, and the fighters of today. I mean, here we got James Kirkland backed out of a fight because he didn't have enough time to train. Then, right. you know, then it was too much. It wasn't enough money. Uh, we got, you know, Kid Chocolate who says, oh, 1.4 isn't that much money at all, you know, and, and I'm going to get bigger, better stuff than this. And what are you talking about, dude? How insulting to everybody that's a fight fan. You know how much 1.4 million is to to to, to poor people and hardworking people. Well, I don't know. It's 1.4 million. It's a lot of money, uh, and it's kind of insulting to say it isn't. And especially when you're, you know <laughs> your, your middleweight reign was 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 about as you know uh, I don't know. It's just kind of as phony as Apollon Cassidy to steal a quote from Sam Shepard. Uh, it, it, it you know just it, it it drives you nuts. And then you see a guy like Carvajal, and it's such a pleasure. And you know C- Caleb Truax. Uh, hit us on Twitter listening to the show and, and um that's at Golden Caleb T. Uh he said his you know, Carbajal's pro debut was against a Minnesota guy and would be future champ, Will Grigsby. Uh and it was the best scheduled four round fight ever. Uh and that's kind of shows what they used to do back in the day. Although you know, oh, I, yeah. I I've been one of those that that I critical of Al Heyman of rushing his guys. I think there's a big difference between like kind of starting them early like that versus getting them to their 15th or their 20th fight, and they haven't fought anybody, and now they're fighting for a world title. 
there's a difference, you know, there. And I think Carbajal and, and, and the fights that, that he was, you know, that came out of those kind of tough beginnings, it shows that difference. We don't have it like that anymore. We do with the lower weight classes. Though. I mean, it's, it's pretty hot right now. Gonzalez down there and you know, all the other guys down there. It's, it is, uh, you know, um, kind of like a golden age, but we don't live in an era where people want to televise those fights either. So it's, um, it's a tough situation, but man, he's just as raw as it gets. It reminded me a little bit of our Johnny Tapia interview a long time ago, oh, the year yeah. before he passed. You know what? Let me let me just run down some stuff, okay, really quick, because I think the the overall of listeners that are tuning in don't really know that even with Danny Carbajal, what happened, and he did serve some time um, for forgery and other things. That that this is still continuing. This, this hasn't ended, okay. Um, like I mentioned earlier, his brother was released in December of 2011, okay? He got out, and Michael Carbajal still was being really generous by transferring two properties. And he was allowing them um, to have it over the grandson of Danny Carbajal, which is Keenan Carbajal, to avoid tax, federal tax lien by the IRS to avoid liens by, by Michael Carbajal, too. But then what happened was is that it just continued on. And Danny Carbajal then in December of 6, 2012, he was hit with 196,000 federal tax lien. And, 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 and he was trying to take over the 9th Street gym, well, which a judge in 2013 finally judged for, for Michael Carbajal to have it and to continue still running it and, and to be operated by Michael Carbajal. But... Then what happened is is that Danny and Danny decided they wanted to kind of run on off of Michael Carbajal's name in uh, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. So he had his grandson, which is Keenan, which is not his real last name. Carbajal is not his last name. It's Bazir or Bazar. No, it's um, – yes, Bazir. Okay, that's their last name. He's the father of Keith Bazir. So what happened here is – uh, Keenan was arrested. Actually, I'm sorry. He was it, it, in 2014 uh, uh, of 2013. 2000, I mean, on December 14, 2013, Tamara Vasquez, which is the girlfriend, had filed a report because he was uh, choking her. So this guy has a, he has a history of battery, and he was arrested on the 31st of December 2013. Now, these guys have been trying to ride off the coattail of Michael Carbajal, using his name, using his trunks, and this is something that he's just not happy with. And July 24th, 2014, mm-hmm. Iris attached a federal tax lien with intent to seize it by the Department of Justice with three properties of the names of Josephine Carbajal and Keenan Carbajal in the amount of 196. So, so th- there's a lot of stuff that that continue. And then, there's a, a promotional company that is using Keenan Carbajal, which is called the uh, Ben Miranda Boxing Promotion. Now, Ben Miranda is, is no longer around, and his widow, and his widow has, doesn't want nothing to do with this. But they're under suspicion because Danny Carbajal, with the commissions of Phoenix, Arizona, are not supposed to be doing any type of promotion. They're not even supposed to be close to a boxing club right now, Gabriel. But they're using that that promotional group as a vehicle to do matchmaking and promotional group. So this is not well, this yeah. is something not ending. This is something that's just not ending right now in the life and in the story of Michael Carbajal. You know, he's still in this nightmare of what his brother is doing. Go ahead, you were gonna say something? Well, I think it's it's something we you know, we always talk about um uniformity of rules and things like that. And it's, you know, his case, when you start to look at it like that and, and you say, you know, well, they shouldn't be doing this or that being near boxing and nobody's enforcing it. it. It shows how the Ali act has no teeth, but it also shows how, you know, I, some people see 50 athletic commissions in 50 States. I see, you know, 50, uh, you know, little kind of fiefdoms that are probably filled with all kinds of corruption, cronyism, uh, you know, just all kind of, um, uh, just all manner of bureaucracy that are holding up the you know, rules and safety being, uh, you know, high standards and, and, and proper rules and, and safety precautions in place. Uh, and so it's, you know, it's just, every commission's got their own really scary horror story, you know, is going through this stuff and, and, and sifting 
some of the stuff that I was working on with the California Commission that I never even uh, published before. This is before uh, the last commissioner uh, had come in, the last executive director. Uh, it's just fairly amazing uh, how much how much just gunk gets kind of filled up in in, in the in the political works there, just in the state commission level. Uh, the, the, those guys are it's it's it, like we looked at with this commission with Floyd and here's a group of people you're like are you really here to serve boxing or what do you what is it that you're doing with combat sports who are you who are you here to help because it isn't you know, and you, and you also look at it and you go well did Floyd pay some money to come to this hearing like what was this in aid of any of it um, <laughs> right so, yeah you know, whatever you, yeah when you look at his story and you go wow it's it just happens everywhere. In all different manners and ways, but it's it always has the same kind of characters involved, you know, just cronyism, politics. And, and, and let me make this clear: there is no Phoenix promotional group that wanted to deal with uh, Kenny Carbajal, Danny Carbajal, Josephine Carbajal, nor, known as uh, Cecilia Carbajal, because of the fraud convictions and involvement in conspiracy with Danny Carbajal, you know, and, and the defrauding of Michael Carbajal. So the whole Miranda boxing thing. Um, who the man, like I said, Ben is he's passed away. Uh, they're basically using that, and they're being they're being matchmakers and promoters behind the scenes. Now, now we're going to keep on this and trying to investigate a little bit more how this is being done. But this is the the um, you know this is more or less of what I'm getting the information of what I'm seeing because, like I said, he's been banned. Danny ha- shouldn't be. Anywhere near a boxing event or a boxing gym. And like I said, they're using the name of Mike Carball. Fight fans, you want to call in, you certainly can. And we're getting a great reception from folks about this interview um, with Michael Carball. It was a great interview from the beginning. Let's pass in some fight fans here on Leaving the Ring. We're going to talk about James Kirtland. We're going to talk about a little bit more about Canelo. Uh, we'll talk about this weekend's uh, upcoming fights. Uh, let's get area code uh, 787, Everybody Hates Mondays. I think we have Rob Rindler on the line with us. You there, brother? Yeah, what up, man? What's going on, man? I had to make sure, I had to make sure my phone wasn't on mute because I was laughing my ass off when you used the, when you used, uh, the nickname Mandingo. <laughs> 